Welcome to this video where you will develop a serverless URL shortener using Spring Cloud functions. In this section, we will create a Spring Boot based project with the necessary Spring Cloud dependencies and AWS dependencies that we will need in this project. We will then set up and configure the database so that we can store the short URL and full URL mappings. Then we will build Spring Cloud functions that create short URLs from the long URL. Next, we'll build a Spring Cloud function that takes that short code and provides the full URL. We'll deploy these Spring Cloud functions into AWS, configure the API gateway to redirect the browser to the real site. In the last two sections, we will incorporate a simple email service from AWS into our serverless application to send email notifications when people create their short codes. And then finally, in the last video, we will build the Lambda service to send those email notifications. Welcome to this video where we will create the base Spring Boot project with the required Spring Cloud and AWS dependencies. We will introduce the project that we're going to produce and talk about how it works and what it does. Then we will create the base Spring Boot project and set up those dependencies. This diagram shows the application architecture that we will be producing. We will produce everything that is from the API gateway to the right, but ultimately our services could be integrated into a web application. Because all the Lambda functions are triggered by events, we need to expose them through the AWS API gateway. This allows us to create some RESTful web services to get a URL from a shortcode and to also to generate a shortcode and then send the email. So we'll be implementing all of the Lambda functions using Spring Cloud functions and Spring Boot. We'll set up the DynamoDB and then configure the API gateway to expose those Lambda functions to the world. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create our Spring Boot application. So if you open Eclipse, go to the File, New and Other to be able to create a Spring Boot starter project. Click Next and we can then enter our project name. So we're going to call this Spring Lambda URL Shortener. Uh, it's going to be a Maven project, package type jar, Java version 8. Call the group ID whatever you want, but this example will be com.mtdev UK. The artifact will call the same as the project. And this will be a demo project for, and then again the same package name as the group ID, just to keep things consistent. Click next. The dependency that we want to select here, just to get things up and running, um, will be the cloud AWS core dependency. So this will bring in the Spring Cloud dependencies into the Maven project and then we can start to manipulate things from there. With the Spring Cloud functions capability that's not been rolled into Spring Boot yet so we have to create a project with Spring Cloud in it and then manipulate dependencies so we can get things working from there. Click next again, provides a summary of what's going to be created and click finish. So that's created the project, built dependencies and we just open up the POM file, click on POMXML to look at the raw configuration, and we can see the project that we've created here. There's a number of things that we want to do here, um, just around providing base versions, dependencies, and plugins. So a couple of versions that we're going to pull in. First off here, our Spring Cloud version, which is still on the snapshot build. It's not formally been released yet, Hopefully 1.0 will come out shortly and a wrapper, a wrapper version um, for one of the plugins that we're using. Next we need to include a number of dependencies. So the base projects that we've already created, pulling in Spring Cloud Starter AWS um, and also the Starter Test dependency. But what we need to include here is a number of additional dependencies which I'm just going to include in one go and then talk through them. So these dependencies scroll to the top and 
each one of these I've provided a comment to explain what they're there for. So the first dependency, Spring Cloud Starter Function Web, um, this provides the basic Spring Cloud function capabilities, but also from a web perspective. So we're in providing this, it will automatically create web endpoints from our Spring Cloud functions. But the Spring Cloud function adapter for AWS, so we're creating these Spring Cloud functions and the capabilities need to work in AWS. So Spring have provided a starter dependency effectively here that we can include that then means that we can easily deploy this into AWS. So the AWS Lambda function entry point is defined in this dependency. Next we've got the AWS Java SDK DynamoDB. So because we're using that particular database system, naturally we'll need that dependency. The next one that we have here is AWS Java Core. So this is just uh, providing those core capabilities for our AWS Lambda functions. The next couple of dependencies here we need for the simple mail capability and also the AWS simple email service. So two dependencies here to enable us to be able to generate emails using the Spring framework, but also integrating into the AWS simple email service. A little bit later on here, so we've got the AWS Java SDK Lambda dependency. We need this capability because it provides us with the at Lambda function annotation. And you'll see in a future video, we will be using that capability to be able to call other Lambda functions within our existing Lambda functions. And again, with the final dependency, AWS Java SDK Core, this is also required for the Lambda Invoker factory that we will be using to call other Lambda functions from within our code. And this particular capability is to where we will be generating a short code. We want to just send an email to the user to notify them that they've created a particular short code. Here's the short code and also here's the URL for that short code. Just to explain how you can actually integrate with other AWS features within your Lambda functions and your Spring Cloud functions. Scrolling down, so what we're going to do now is add to the dependency management section just to override some of the versions. Um, there are some sort of dependency discrepancies whereby we're using functionality in later versions of the AWS jars that actually currently um, the Spring Boot Starter uh, dependencies are pulling in earlier versions. We require later versions to work with things like the at Lambda function and the Lambda Invoker Factory. So what we're adding here is overriding some of the versions for these dependencies uh, to version 1.11.334. Um, the examples will work with these versions, so if you're following along, then you'll be able to get this project to work correctly in your system. And then what we finally need to do is just update the uh, build plugins to be able to build the jar file in the correct way um, that works in AWS, that pulls in all the dependencies, creates an Uber jar, but also slims down that, that Uber jar to only include the dependencies that are absolutely required to run an AWS Lambda function. Just quickly going over these two things, so the first plugin here is the Maven Shade plugin, and that's responsible for creating the AWS Uber jar, so pulling in, creating that jar that has all of the other third-party dependencies, they're all wrapped up into that, that single jar file, so we can deploy that into AWS. And then the second plugin here, provided by Spring to then sort of slim down that jar so it reduces the deployable jar to a smaller deployable size um, into AWS. So we save that file. The one final thing that we need to do in order for this project to actually build is we need to go to the source main resources folder and into application properties. And we just need to provide some configuration here to the Spring application that tells us a number of different things and to, or tells the application a number of different things in terms of what region it's running in and the access key and the secret key. So what we will do here 
is you need to provide your access key and your secret key and make sure that you've provided the AWS region that you've created for your particular account because this is the environment that the application is going to be interacting with. Another thing that we do need to do here is it's actually bad practice to put your access key and secret key into your source control. What you should really be doing is externalizing that um, outside of the application. And when you deploy it, you should effectively inject those keys in so that you're not storing your very sensitive sort of access and secret keys in your code base, which means that everybody who has access to your code base then has access to those keys and therefore access to AWS. But for the purposes of just getting things up and running and getting things easy to run, you can just copy your keys into this property file. So what we'll now do is right click on the project, go down to run as and click Maven install. And this will now build our project from scratch, run the basic standalone test, and then you should then get a clean build that we can then start to do the rest of the work with. And there we go, build success. Well done.